Today, guys, we have your own power firm, the beast of the designer world. This is the strongest designer fragrance you can get your hands on, period. There's no fragrance that screams beast mode as much as this fragrance screams beast mode, all right? That's how strong this fragrance is. This is the godfather of all beast mode designer fragrance. Every beast mode bows down to your own parfum, even Ultramol. Amani Co Profumo has nothing on this guy and <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to review this one. I've been loving this forever. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Hey guys, Tim here. Welcome back to another video. Today we have your own parfum. Now I decided to review this one today simply to honor the new releases or the discontinuation of the old Dior Homme and Dior Homme Intense. Now before I get right into the review of this one, let me tell you guys the news updates on Dior Homme and Dior Homme Intense 2020. So inside the US, Dior Homme 2020 and Dior Homme Intense 2020 will be replacing the original Dior Homme and Dior Homme Intense. So no more original formulation inside the US itself. Those formulations will be exclusively available in Europe, much like how Dior Homme Parfum is only available in Europe and or duty free. So the 2020s for Dior Homme and Dior Homme Intense are here in the USA to stay. So a little bit of a public service announcement. If you have not bought yourself Dior Homme or Dior Homme Intense yet and you live inside the United States, you should go ahead and grab them before the price shoots up to around a few hundred dollars. Now maybe that's a little bit of exaggeration. Before the price shoot up to the hundred dollar mark, grab yourself a bottle right now because they are gonna be going away. I have myself grabbed myself Dior Homme and Dior Intense. Despite not liking it, I still grabbed it simply because I know I'll like it more than the new releases. I know I like Dior Homme better than the new Dior Homme 2020 already. And I myself wanted to own a piece of that timeless masterpiece in my collection. Although I don't like it personally, I still appreciate it for what it's done. And if you're a fan of Dior Homme and Dior Homme Intense, I suggest you grab a bottle for yourself if you haven't done so yet. All right, on to the review of this one. I have the dry down right there, just on a piece of paper. And I sprayed that around, I give or take an hour or two hours ago. And legit, I kid you not, this whole house smells like Dior Homme Parfum. It smells like iris, leather, rose, balm, and it, it's gorgeous. It's a very, very gorgeous smell. But just one spray really fills up the whole entire house. That's how strong this fragrance is. So we'll get right into the performance in a second here. Let's start off with the opening of this one first. And I'm gonna spray it on my hand because I'm gonna remind myself, just for you guys, I'm gonna <laughs> spray this. Oh, this is it, man. Dior Homme Parfum is really, really it. Right off the top, you're gonna get this really nice, bright kind of iris. It's not a super lipsticky iris that is very much more subdued, if you believe that. It's very elegant, very gentlemanly type of iris. Alongside the, alongside the little bit of a citrus in there, that is the mandarin that gives it a little bit of a sparkly top, a little bit of a singy top note. And the opening is just so gorgeous. Now behind those two notes, you'll smell a really strong leather, just starting to build up over time. It's not super strong in the opening, but you know it's creeping up. It's getting stronger and stronger the more you smell it. And alongside the leather, the rose itself, it's not a super rosy type of rose, not a super sweet rose, but a very dark, subdued rose that kind of complements the leather. Instead of being at the same level as the leather, the rose is pretty much toned down and is made to just complement the main note that's in this fragrance, which is the leather. The leather in here is super strong. In the opening, not so much. You still get a lot of that iris, but towards the mid, the more it dries down, the more the leather really comes up and dominate this whole entire scent. And that's the beauty of this one is that everything else, every other notes that's in this fragrance were made to complement the leather. Even the base notes were made to complement the leather. The leather in here is done extremely well. If you love leather fragrances in any given capacity, I highly suggest you to smell to your own parfum because it's just absolutely gorgeous. So strong, rich, masculine, gentlemanly. I think of this as the godfather of Dior Homme and Dior Homme Intense. So if Dior Homme is just your average man, Dior Homme Intense is kind of like more metrosexual, more feminine leaning. This one is your godfather. This one is the most masculine version 
of the whole entire line. And I absolutely adore this fragrance right here. If it wasn't so hard to wear, I would wear it a lot more. As you jump from the opening into the mid, you start to notice a lot of woody notes start to pop up. The cedar wood, the sandalwood, and the oud start to pop up a lot more. I would say in this composition, I smell a lot more of the cedar and sandalwood. I don't smell a lot of the oud, to be completely honest with you. I smell the more of a dusty, woody scent that comes off the cedar and sandalwood type of woodiness. The oud is, to me, a lot more subdued, I guess. I don't really smell a lot of it. It's not a really rich, dark wood. It smells more akin to a dusty type woody scent that is in, again, cedar and sandalwood. And alongside those notes, you also get ambrette, which is a floral version of a musk note. So musk notes is usually synthetic musk. This musk is from a floral origin, so ambrette is basically a floral musk. The musk and the woody notes in here really just adds a little bit of a complexity onto the scent. Like I said again, all the notes were made to complement the leather and these base notes complement the leather very, very well. The slight touch of woody notes adds a very nice kind of formal, gentleman, mysterious kind of very masculine vibe onto your leather. So it's not just pure leather. It's not just a one dimensional type of fragrance. The woody notes really adds a lot of extra texture, a lot of extra nuances to this fragrance. The musk itself, I think helps this fragrance more with the longevity. You don't get too much of the ambrette in here. It's really just there to kind of add to the longevity of this scent, which is already pretty monstrous. I don't know why they added extra musk in here or if the extra musk is the cause of the longevity of this fragrance or not. But in the mid, you start to get a lot more of the woodsy notes and a little bit of the umbrette. The leather is quite strong right now. The mandarin is pretty much gone. The rose is still there and the iris is still there as well. Pretty much on the same level as the rose, again, to complement the leather. In the dry down, which I have right here, the fragrance becomes quite a lot more subtle. I would say that the iris in here is pretty much very, very fleeting now. The rose also very, very fleeting. The leather itself has toned down quite a bit and what you're really left with is the musk, the ambrette musk in here and some woody notes. Some leather is still present, but it's pretty much on par now with the base notes, which used to be less potent than the leather itself in the mid, is now equal to the leather in the dry down. And overall, it's still a very nice masculine scent, a very nice woody leather iris scent. It still conveys that very formal, very elegant suit and tie kind of vibe throughout the whole fragrance. And in the dry down, I feel like it's even more so of that suit and tie. It's as if you just finished with a suit and tie event, you came home, it was a very successful day. At that event, you had a lot of really good business connections your brand is gonna move forward in a good way. A lot of big opportunities are hitting your way and now you're just lounging around inside your house, your suit is unbuttoned, you're just sitting there on your couch just enjoying life and enjoying all the opportunities that is about to happen in the future. That's what this fragrance kind of smells to me because in the opening, you're very focused, you're very strong, you're very determined. That's how strong this fragrance comes off. You're very determined to get this event done in the most successful way possible. And at the end of the day, when this fragrance starts to tone down, you start to get more relaxed. You've done it, you finished the event, you did what you wanted to do, and now you're just relaxing. Oh man, it's quite a journey of a fragrance for sure. I love fragrances that takes me on a journey like that. And this fragrance definitely does that for me in a very just super satisfying way. Now onto my overall thoughts about the scent of Dior and Parfum. What do I think of this in an overarching kind of way? I really like this fragrance. I really like it. For someone who really doesn't care too much about strong iris, this one is a phenomenal, phenomenal scent. And I cannot believe that it's actually designer. Now this is when Dior cares about their releases, okay? 2020 is when Dior stops caring about their releases, but this is back when Dior still cares. And they release something that's groundbreaking like this one right here, that's oh, an absolute gem in the designer world. It does not smell designer whatsoever. It smells like it should belong in the private collection, more so than it belongs in this designer collection, the Dior Ohm collection. This one is just, oh, I can't say it enough. I feel like I'm like a broken record at this point but it is just a phenomenal scent. And it's a love from all levels, from the top to the mid to the dry down. I love every single part of this scent. All right, now on to the performance of this fragrance. This one lasts on me easily 24 plus hours. I've never actually tested how long it lasts on my skin, 
because normally I would take a shower and sleep before then. Even if I didn't take a shower that day, I wouldn't take a shower, you know, like two days in a row not take a shower. So I've never really <laughs> tested this fragrance out that long. But, but suffice to say, you have no complaints at all when it comes to the performance of this scent. It's the strongest projecting designer fragrance that I own, period, and that I ever smelled period. No other fragrance even comes close. Like I said, one spray in a corner of my house was able to fill up the whole entire room and I just sprayed one more on my arm so I guess tonight I'm gonna be going to bed smelling the Euron Parfum all night long which I'm perfectly okay with because it smells fantastic but that's just to tell you how strong this fragrance is. It's definitely the strongest and for your beast mode lover this one would definitely not disappoint you and it may just overwhelm some of you Beast Mode lovers as well. Moving on to the versatility, this is where this fragrance take a really big dip as in it's not super versatile at all. In the winter time, it's the only time realistically to wear this fragrance and even then, it's a very hard fragrance to wear. I would reserve this for outdoors only, no indoor events whatsoever, unless you're wearing like a suit and tie and you're in kind of like this really big hall, great hall kind of events where you have a lot of room for this fragrance to breathe. Other than that I would not suggest this fragrance in an indoor closed environment. This one is an outdoor or big venue event only and only in the winter time. And in terms of occasion, I recommend this for formal occasion because like I said, it really smells regal, gentlemanly, mysterious, very suit and tie heavy fragrance right here. So I recommend it only really for formal occasions. So this fragrance, as you can see, there's not many times where you want to use this fragrance. So if you do buy a bottle of this one, you're probably going to own it pretty much forever because you're never gonna really finish it. And couple that with the fact that you only really need one spray of this fragrance at all times, you're really going to have this bottle until like the generations of your grandson kind of thing. Which kind of makes this fragrance worth it because it's gonna last in your family a long time. Despite the high price tag, to me, still pretty worth it. Next, we're gonna touch a little bit on a compliment factor and this one's compliment factor is medium to low at best, simply because it's very much an artistic fragrance. It's very much a thick, thick fragrance and general public, the general masses tend to like more fresh, more sweet, more airy, more loosen up type of fragrance. Not a lot of people in the mass public like rich, thick, heavy, ambery, leather type fragrance. It's a little bit too much for a lot of people out there. So this one, if it does get you compliments, then you should really appreciate that compliment because it's a hard one to come by for sure. It's not a type of scent that will garner you a lot of compliments, if any, because it also is very, very much a strong fragrance. So it can also put someone off as well if you wear it in the wrong situations. So compliment getting potential for me at its highest peak is like mid-level at best, but in general, it's pretty low in comparison to a lot of other designer fragrances out there. Next, we're gonna talk about the price, and this one you can really only get at 75 ml, and it runs around $80 at the cheapest, and this is on eBay and discounters and all that, $80 at the cheapest, and I've seen it going for as high as $130. So don't buy it at $130. Buy it, I would say, roughly at $80 and $90. That price range is really, really good for this. I would say the highest you should pay for this fragrance is less than $100. Like, $95, something like that. Once it hit over the $100 mark, it becomes a little bit more ridiculous because you're not gonna find a lot of use for this fragrance. Although it's very artistic, very amazing scent, and one of those gems from the order that you should have in your collection, you should wait for it to drop down in price if the price is over $100. You can definitely find it in the $80 to $90, and for that price, it is a very, very, very worth it fragrance. All right guys, that's it for a review of Dior Parfum. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this one doesn't run too long as well. I had a lot to say about Dior Parfum. But yes guys, oh, last few words. Don't forget to buy yourself Dior Homme and Dior Homme Intense and pick this one up if you can, Dior Homme Parfum. These trio are like legendary in the Dior Homme line. If they ever, if, oh my God, I can't even think about this. If they ever, release a Dior Homme Parfum 2020. That would just be depressing. I don't even want to think about that. So before I get into that train of thought process, of that depressing thought process, I'll see you guys in the next video tomorrow. Peace out and bye.